Hello, Jo and I are uh, two artists who are lucky enough to live and work in York. And um, Jo Yates has a shop made at 52, and that's the shop, and I have uh, Jane Dignam Artworks. And we're here today to explain a little bit more about us and about the work that we do. So I'm going to hand over to Jo now, and I'm going to ask you, Jo, can you say something about what um, I would find if I was to go to your shop now? Uh, what sort of work would I see? Um, can you describe it? And can you describe how you make it and the materials you use? Okay, thanks, Jane. Um, what you would find in my shop, um, it's mainly uh, f uh, textile art and collage pieces. So lots of fabric seascapes. Um, in terms of materials, well, um, fabric is the, uh, the obvious um, uh, ingredient. And it's mainly this, denim. I love working with frayed edges and torn pieces of paper and all that sort of thing. Um, I'm fascinated by deckled edges and selve edges. Um, and apart from fabric, fabric and paper, I work with a lot of um, buttons, threads, um, found objects and ephemera like um, Ooh, sewing patterns and um, old books, uh, foreign language books, newspapers. Sometimes I paint them to get the colour that I want. Um, so it's a bit of a magical magpie mixture of all sorts of things. Amazing. So I'm relatively new to this malarkey. I've only been on Etsy for about a year. Um, following a fairly sig significant career change. But you, Jane, you've been making prints for about 20 years now, haven't you? Um, can you tell me how you got started and, and, and what's involved in printmaking? Yeah, I'll try and be brief because there's such a lot to say about printmaking. But yes, I have been printmaking for quite some time. Um, I too was working as a teacher for ages, but I've always been printing in the background uh, until I did an art degree. Uh, where I got to use a print room and that was it. I just fell in love with printmaking. Then I did um, a, a short course in York about lino printing using an etching press like the one you see behind me. And, and that was it, I was, just, I was just hooked on it. So very briefly, uh, just to describe how I would make a, a print, I would use a bit of lino. So this is actual uh, artist lino. It's made out of linseed and cork. Or you can use like a plastic version. Then using my tools, I will ch chisel out a design. Obviously, I draw the design on the lino, and I'll, then I'll chisel it out. After that, I roll on ink with my roller. It's an oil-based ink. Cover that with uh, oil-based ink. Put your paper on top, and you print the design. And after that, I might colour it by hand painting with, with like a water-based watercolour. And there's a lot, there's, that's just one way of printmaking. There's loads of different things you can do. Um, and you know, you've always got to keep experimental as well. Um, but briefly, in a nutshell, that's that's a, an example of most of the types of print you find in my shop. So um, over to you now. Um, can you tell me where you create your work, and how would you describe where you create your work? Well, all the magic happens on the dining room table. Um, as is often the case, I find with uh, with artists and, and makers, that's where that's where we start off. Um, it generally works. My, my when you say dining room table, it sort of sounds like it might be uh, in a quiet corner of the house behind a closed door, but it's not really like that. It's right in the middle of the house. It's in a sort of an open plan bit of the house, so it works best, I would say, when you're not having a lockdown. Um, it's uh, been quite challenging. Uh, during these last few months but you know you just got to get on with it you can't wait for conditions to be perfect can you um so yeah that's where it happens and actually one advantage of lockdown is that we managed to fashion um a, a sort of sewing station in one alcove in the dining room so at least i can keep my sewing machine out um all the time which is a massive help because uh, that was a bit of a pain to be putting it away and taking it out all the time but yeah, there's nothing, um, it's, it's just, I, you know, do it where there's the biggest flat surface area for me to work on. That's, that's, it's as simple as that. 
Whereas you, I can see, I, there's a beautiful light filled studio behind you. I've got a bad case of studio envy. Um, how long have you had that studio? And, and tell, tell us about the pros and cons of having a home studio. Okay, yeah, I'm very lucky, I know that. Um, I've had the studio now for about 18 months. Um, I did have my etching press in the kitchen before, and I had a little corner of the kitchen, but like you've got your corner, you know, that you work in, um, which was fine actually. I, I really did enjoy working in there, but I had to be a little bit conscious of other people in the house because I quite often use uh, oil based inks and then I used uh, solvents to clean up afterwards and it can really be a bit smelly really. Um, so it's great because I've got this area now where I can do all my mess, leave all my mess out if I have to, like you, you're saying, you know, um, it's nice to be able to move your work out but sometimes you have to tidy it up, don't you? Well, if you've got a studio, you can be a bit more relaxed about that. And the other thing is, I, I know where everything is, it's fantastic, you know. Um, so yeah, I've got room. I've got room for my etching press. I've also got a letter press behind me. And uh, I know um, you can't see it all at the minute, but just to let people know who might be watching this, um, when we do the events at the weekend, I might be able to show people around a little bit more. And um, also I'm going to upload some videos onto Etsy as well. So if people are interested in my studio, they can have a look on there. Excellent. Well, so, I'll, I'll come and have a look at that. <laughs> fine. I'll, get on there then and make some films and uh, yeah no yeah fine i like some people around that so it's good fun but i'm going to go back on to you now because i uh, i i did have a look at your work in your exit shop and i noticed that lots of your work incorporates maps and you seem to have a lot of type and letter press in there which obviously you're, in, you're inspired by so uh, can you tell me about these and and what else inspires you yeah i love i love both of those things um I don't know what it is that it's just they're just so full of character I mean I the letterpress stuff it, I just I've always been fascinated by um typography different um fonts and typefaces and all that sort of thing and they've just got so much personality and um, I've got a lovely printer's tray downstairs just for de well so far just for decoration um and I've got um a, a really nice collection of um wooden printer's blocks um, so yeah, I've always just been fascinated by words. Um, and uh, regarding the maps, uh, there's so much detail in maps. Um, and you know, uh, particularly with the Yorkshire maps, lots of really funny names. And I like just, uh, I did a geography A-level years and years and years ago. And I, you know, I am just a bit of a map geek and I like sort of imagining taking it from the 2D map and imagining how the landscape actually looks in 3D. And I like all the wrinkles and creases and the, you know, the life that the, the, the map has had before it came to me. And similarly with, you know, books and linens and um, denim and that sort of thing. I like the, I like the rough bits around the edges. Yeah, there's something aesthetically pleasing about maps as well, isn't there? They're, they're fascinating. You can study maps for ages, can't you? Yeah, I sometimes spend hours, when I'm supposed to be doing a commission or something like that, <laughs> I get distracted. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. So your, um, your work, Jane, um, seems to focus very much on nature. There's lots of um, sort of animals and plants and all that sort of thing. And I know that your um, studio gives you a good view onto your garden. Um, mm. So, where, you know, where, is, that, is that where you gather a lot of your inspiration? Where, where does that all come from? Yeah, I mean, I love gardens. I really do. I mean, I'm really into gardening. Um, I go to the Chelsea Flower Show every year. Not this year, oh. sadly. Mm. I know. Um, but yeah, I've got an allotment as well. So I just love the structure of plants. So I find them so fascinating. The, the, the endless array of forms and shapes and also I see, I see quite a lot of um, wildlife especially birds when I'm on, on the allotment and, and really who doesn't like birds and wildlife really um, I, I find that people really respond well to all my work that incorporates a bird or plants so I, I do I do a lot of those I've got to confess um, but as well as that I'm also very interested in York uh, in the surrounding area of York and I live a stone throw from the railway museum so um, you know, things like the, the mallard and the, the flying Scotsman, things like that often occur. It's basically stuff that, that I come into contact with that inspires me, really. Um, so, 
I know that you've mentioned some of the materials that you use and you know the fantastic materials that you like to incorporate but as well as all your um, actual fabrics and things like that is there anything else that you're thinking of building into your work or is there anything new on the horizon? Oh lots of things I because as I said I'm, I'm quite new to this so I'm really um, sort of experimenting with different things as I as I go along um, uh, in fact in a previous chat uh, earlier this week you gave me the idea of using um, some of my little um, wooden um, uh, letterpress blocks to um, to make some impressions I'm going to give that a go mm -hmm. um, I am particularly interested to explore painting on fabric and stitching on paper um, and I've just got a new uh, foot for my sewing machine a free, mo free motion embroidery foot um, so I'd really like to give that a go. That's basically like sketching with 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 stitches. It's uh, you can get some really really interesting effects with that. So um, yeah, I I've, I've got three words kind of going around in my head, which are uh, pleasingly text, textiles, and textures, and they're the things that I want to explore. So how about you? I um I noticed. Um, on your social media feed recently, you had two really lovely, really colourful, vibrant prints. Um, one was a Morris Minor, I think, and the other one was one of those old style espresso pots. Mm. And they seem to be quite different in style to your previous work. Is that a new direction for you? Or? It is. I don't know whether it's something to do with the lockdown either. Um, maybe it is, but mm. I know the, um, I've got my Hawthorne inks to get my all my stuff from a place called Hawthorne on the outskirts of York it's a fantastic resource for printmakers and they make their own inks there and I've got they're opaque they're, they're called stay open inks and they're, they're opaque and they sit on top of each other um, and you can't see one above the other you know it's totally opaque however you can add this stuff called transparent and that open, opens up a whole wealth of new things you can do because you can blend the colours you can lay them on top of each other where they overlap and the colour. So I started to play with this idea. And also, with it being locked down, I had to look very close to inspiration. I mean, I could get to the allotment, thank goodness, but I couldn't really get much further than that. So I started to look around the house and I noticed that I got one of those coffee pots and thought, that's a great iconic shape. So I just thought I'd play with that simple design and, and just experiment with these transparent inks. And then the next door neighbour to me has got this fantastic old Morris Minor that's parked outside my house. So I went outside and took some sneaky photographs and brought those back in. And again, I just thought I'd have a go at um, overlapping the colours. Because I only use three colours making that um, print. And people go in the extra shop and see it. But where they overlap on the car itself, it makes it black. I just found that really interesting. You know, it's, just like, it's quite technical. Um, and I, 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 do, I do get quite engrossed in the processes and the technicality of using inks. And uh, I'll stop there because I could wrap it on for hours. Well, before you do stop, just tell me one thing. When you're going yeah. through that process with the stay open and the transparent, do you do you know what result colour you're going to get? Or is it sometimes a surprise? Or are there elements of unpredictability about that? Yeah, there's a lot of unpredictability and a lot of surprises. And that's the joy of it, actually. But what you, what you should do if you were unlike me, what some people do is they actually do test colours one on top of the other and they actually record this in their sketchbook so that you've got a, an accurate record of exactly what you will achieve. Now I haven't got the patience for any of that but um, I do tend to remember you know when something works well and I do actually keep specimen prints in my sketchbook so I, I do keep a kind of record but yeah it's a mixture of building up the knowledge so you can use it in the future and um, yeah just let yourself go a bit and see what happens. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> oh well it's been really good to talk to you Jane uh, I'm and sure there's lo loads more that you could um, tell us about your various processes um, but that's probably all we've got time for so anyway thank you very much for watching if you want to know any more about Jane's work or about mine then pop over to our Etsy shops or you can ping us a message um, during the online market using the chat function so thanks for watching bye <laughs>